State Farm Stadium, the 49ers' new home, has not been kind. They win, I mean, they fall, rather, to the Washington football team today, and they fall to the Buffalo Bills in Week 13. They now move to the road to face the Cowboys, but we welcome you into the NBC Sports Bay Area Studios. We got our former, former 49ers with us here, Ian Williams, Dante Whitner, Jeff Garcia, and Laura Britt. And over the next hour, we're going to be breaking down everything that you saw today at State Farm Stadium from Glendale, Arizona for the Niners. It really, Jeff, was in summary, a game of missed opportunities for San Francisco. Too many missed opportunities, too many opportunities given to the other team. When you look at what Washington did scoring 14 points from a defensive standpoint, not being able to muster up a touchdown themselves, but offensively for the 49ers, just not good. Got away from their game plan of running the football, especially running the football to the left side of the defense or the offensive line at Chase Young instead of away from Chase Young. They're much more successful going to the left and then passing the football. Mullins, very sporadic, late on throws, inconsistent, not very accurate. Just too many letdowns throughout the game and uh, cost them a chance to win a football game. Absolutely, and a wasted opportunity to finish this football game the way that they should. The defense played outstanding. The offense, just too many mistakes. High throws, drop passes, turnovers, being careless with the football. You cannot win football games in the National Football League when you lose the turnover differential, and that's why they lost the way that they did today. They turned the ball over too many times. The offense actually gave up more points than the defense today, and that should, they should be uh, tremendously, tremendously disappointed in their efforts. And I thought the Washington football team, whenever they needed four yards, they got it on first down. Whenever they needed five yards, they got it on the ground. So I've taken it upon the defensive line where they needed to play better. I know Javon Kenlaw, a couple guys had a couple plays here and there, but for the most part, I need to see more from the defense, especially from that front seven. You got to be able to stop guys from running the football so easily. All right, right now we're going to get you out to Levi Stadium as we welcome in our 49ers insider, Matt Mayoko. Uh, Mayoko, something also from this game were injuries. We saw Fred Warner go out. We saw Debo Samuel go out. That is more pileup of injuries for the 49ers, and that's certainly not something they need right now in the season. No, and that's, I mean, we've talked about this, that with the injuries, it's very difficult to gain any kind of consistency. We saw it right from the beginning. I mean, the 49ers have been, you know, looking forward to having Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and Raheem Mostert and many gotcha. of their offensive weapons out there. Of course, they still don't have George Kittle, but then Samuel goes out of the game. 49ers just couldn't get anything going. And, you know, what it really says to me is where's the 49ers quarterback situation because, has struggled, you know, as much as uh, Nick Mullen struggled in this game and the entire world was calling for C.J. Beathard to go in in place of Nick Mullins, Kyle Shanahan felt like his hands were tied and he just stayed with Nick Mullins. And now they did get a touchdown drive out of that shortly after that pick six. It really blew the game open. But, I mean, what does it say about C.J. Beathard that uh, Nick Mullins can play as poorly as he did and yet Nick Mullins stayed on the field? That's a great question, and I'm going to bring that back in studio here. Mayoko, great insight as always. We appreciate it. And ask Jeff Garcia that exact question. People were calling Jeff for Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins does not I, – for uh, C.J. Beathard, rather. Hello. I need some coffee. We've been here all day. Um, people were calling for, for C.J. Beathard, but Kyle Shanahan sticks with Nick Mullins. Was that the right decision, Jeff? Well, he's the head coach, so he's going to make whatever decision he feels is best for the team. But we as fans and as former players all thought at halftime there should be a change at the quarterback position because of the fact that they needed a jump, a jump start. They needed a, a boost from that position to be able to make better decisions, more accurate throws, to eliminate costly turnovers. And what happened in the first half with the big fumble right before halftime that led to six points for the Washington team. And then in the second half, third quarter, a poor decision on an interception that goes the other way, cost your team 14 points on a day where your defense played well enough, played good enough football to win the football game. Your offense gave away too many disappointing plays and it starts with the quarterback position. Ian, when you were watching Nick Mullins today, what frustrated you the most about his game? Just that he was just staring at his receivers. You know, Jeff, we were talking about that, how 
you make it so easy for a defense to be able to see where you're throwing the football. If you just give them, like what do you say all the time, Dante, you open, you give them the mail, and you, you let them read it, it's going to be easy for them. So if you're just staring down a receiver and you don't even allow yourself to go through the progression or uh, allow yourself to go through the down and, and be able to make decisions, then you're going to struggle. You're going to make bad decisions. Absolutely, and there's many throws out there that he actually should have made. Like the seam throws, the one with the safeties in the middle of the field. Like you hear Jeff talking through in the game. He's saying, hey, stare down the right seam to move the safety out of the middle of the field so that you can come back and throw the left seam. That was totally against what he was coached to do. And he's showing that he has many limitations and he can't lead this football team. So for everybody out there saying, hey, let's get rid of Garoppolo, hopefully you reevaluate the way that you feel about Garoppolo and understand that he's your only chance towards reaching the playoffs and ultimately getting a chance to win a Super Bowl. We talked about certain things with the quarterback position, and I emphasize it all the time. It starts with your feet and your eyes. They have to lead you to the throw. Oftentimes, it looks like Mullins is surprised by the opening, and that's why he's either late or off target. His feet aren't ready. They're not going in the direction of the target location to help his accuracy. Too many times, he's sitting back on his back foot at the back of the pocket instead of hitching up into the pocket and actually making an accurate throw because he's got enough zip on the ball. He's not a guy with a strong arm. He can't afford to throw off his back foot. That's why you see errant throws. They're either low, they're high, or they're off location spot. There's a tight window of opportunity in the National Football League. If you don't hit it, you're going to be bad. He looked bad today. Let's bring in the other part of our broadcast crew and Takeo Spikes to weigh in on this. Takeo, were you one of the ones calling for C.J. Beathard? Do you think that Shanahan should have gone with C.J. in the second half? I, I felt like that, especially going into halftime. But at the end of the day, like Jeff stated, he's the head coach, and I felt like he made the right decision. Now, this is one thing that we haven't talked about is you look in the fourth quarter when uh, Nick Mullins threw the interception, the pick six. I told, I think that was the fourth quarter, but I, I totally thought at that time, wow, he needs to be benched because now what's going on is going to affect the defense on that side. He chose to stay with him. And I think one of the most important things, yeah, we, we sit here and, and we criticize, which is rightfully so. That's what we're supposed to do. But the thing I'm proud of, if you look for a silver lining, is understanding that the next drive, he came back and led his team on a double-digit play, uh, play drive all the way down, and they scored. So we talked about him being mentally not tough. We talked about him having that clock inside of his head and it wasn't going off at the right time as far as making the right decision, going through his progressions and letting the ball go on time. But I have to give him a little credit for that. Nick Mullins is what I'm referring to because he did what he was supposed to do in that drive and it kept them in the game late. Yeah, and then late in the game, they couldn't end up getting in the end zone. Let's flip the script and talk a little bit about Alex Smith because that was something that we to uh, focused a lot on heading into this game, just with his ties to the 49ers and also his incredible comeback story. What did you see from Alex Smith and Dwayne Haskins today, Jeff? Well, Washington's offense is not very good, let's be honest. They were 26th in the National Football League coming into the game. 25th, 24th in a lot of different categories. They're not strong in throwing the football. They're not strong in running the football. They're actually best running back was injured today. They got a lot of production out of their other guys. But that being said, Alex was struggling in the first half. Just didn't look comfortable. Uh, not really making the throws down the field that he should be making. Forcing the ball at times. Got one interception taken from him. But that being said, didn't look comfortable. Obviously suffered a little bit of an injury. Hopefully he'll be healthy and and okay from that, but Dwayne Haskins, we were almost happy that he was stepping onto the field because we thought there were opportunities now that the defense was gonna get with balls just being thrown up in the air. And that being said, neither quarterback from any team in this game really played like an NFL quarterback today. And Alex Smith struggled, Haskins struggled, and rightfully so, this defense was playing with their hair on fire. They confused Alex Smith early in this football game. On third downs, they showed mug linebackers up in the box, played some man, played some zone, played some three-man rush, and they confused him. He made some errant throws. But at the end of the day, they scored nine points on offense today. Washington scored nine points. The defense for the 49ers played lights out. They, had, they were two for two in the red zone, right? When they gave turnovers over, they had 17 points off of turnovers, and that's the reason why they lost. Hats off to Robert Sala and the defense for bouncing back for last week. Takeo, how do you feel about it? 
Well, I don't think very highly of the Washington football team's offense simply because when you look at the stat line across the board, and I was over here writing down everything, Dante. Listen, 21 to 12, they were outgained on first down by the 49ers. You look at third down, both were horrific on that part. Had more plays, more yards, total overall. So when you look at this defensively, to me, and I've been on teams like this in the past, you start to look at the offensive side of the football team a different way. And nobody really has room to say and come out with a speech on the offensive side. Nick Mullins is really not in a position to where he can come out and say, hey, guys, listen, we just got to stay together. Because I remember being in that locker room. Guys would be looking at you like, man, if you can't play no better, you really don't need to be talking at all. And so that's the bottom line. Hats off to this defensive football team because they did more than enough to not only create turnovers, which they won, but they didn't win that battle, but they created enough turnovers to be able to win, kept down the yardage, and still walked away with the loss. Yeah, with that, Takio, Ian, I want to get to you on this because that brought up something. With When quarterbacks, everybody on the field is going to make mistakes. We all know that. But when a quarterback consistently makes mistakes, and it's not the leader of your team, it is your backup, in this case, Nick Mullins, what does that do to you mentally for the rest of the offense and then also for the 49ers defense? Well, on defense, obviously, if you have a guy that's messing up constantly, throwing picks or errant throws, not getting the offense in you know, good plays, you're going to be like, all right, if I have a bad double team and I get you know, taken off the field, you know, I get taken off the field, why don't you take him off the field too? Why don't you bench him? So it turns into a you know, he said or you point the fingers and then it's just a whole bunch of just blah out there where you don't want to cause that because you got you know, your offense and your defense that they need to go out there and play as one. And if your quarterback's over there just not playing as he needs to, your defense is going to play whatever. Yeah, it seemed like the frustration was kind yeah. of building there. Let's flip the script right now and talk about the battle in the trenches, something that we covered on 49ers pregame live earlier this morning with Trent Williams going up against Chase Young, Montez Sweat, and Mike McGlinchey. And Chase Young, Dante, had the 49ers number today. Absolutely. He was all over the field. He looked like the number two pick in the draft today. On the screens, he was everywhere. Uh, 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 you know, affecting the quarterback in the pocket. Being where he was supposed to be on the sack, he lucked up and got a sack today. He wasn't even, they didn't even pay attention to him. Picking up the fumble and running it in. He did everything that he was supposed to do and he looked like the number two pick. Shout out to Chase Young for an incredible performance and leading his team to victory. With Chase Young and all the pressure he was putting on Nick Mullins, do you think all that pressure, Jeff, was more Nick Mullins' poor decision making or was this a breakdown of the offensive line? Was it really good play from the Washington football team defense? Well, I think at times it was just Mullins being indecisive. Uh, the one sack that we talked about with Chase Young, he was actually in a drop coverage and then reacted late because Mullins was holding on to the ball, couldn't find an open receiver. And maybe that is contributed or attributed to, co to coverage down the field on certain plays. But we talked about it at halftime. We talked about it before the game. The way to attack Chase Young is to go right at him. I'd love to see the stats of when the 49ers ran to the left as opposed as compared to when they ran to the right. When they ran behind Trent Williams at Chase Young, they were highly more, it seemed to be, they were more effective. When they ran behind McGlinchey to the other side, didn't have the effect. And Chase Young now chases down plays because he's highly athletic from the backside and he's got a high motor. He's gonna chase down plays from the backside and that's where he caused the fumble to Wilson early in the first half. And you know, you gotta give him credit for the player that he is, but I think when they attacked him with the run game, that's where they had success. Yeah, and the 49ers run game struggled in the second half as well. But Takio, I want to get you in here on this. So let's loop you in here on this discussion with Chase Young. And it's something that we talked about in 49ers pregame live. Like Jeff just said, what did you think about how effective he was against the 49ers offense? It, it kind of reminds me a lot of the 2019 49ers defense. Yeah, and, you know, bottom line is this. Chase Young, he was very effective in we saw the stat line. We saw where he came and made his plays. And, Jeff, I, I'll even uh, commit to that with you. If you go back and you look at the stats and you look at the plays to where they ran directly at him, especially coming out in the second half, I remember them going up to the line of scrimmage, and I talked about it. Hey, check with me at the line of scrimmage. I felt like they did that on a few plays in the third quarter, and they got positive yards. 
You have Trent Williams over there. He's a man child over there by himself. And so when you look at it overall, yes, he, Chase Young, he came out, he made plays, and I can't take that away from him. He's the type of player to where he's similar to, we used to call it Johnny on the spot. Wherever there's a turnover that, that may happen, he will be the guy to eventually get his hands on the ball. And we saw what happened. He turned it into a touchdown. Yeah, uh, the Washington football team, if you're just now joining us, beat the 49ers 23-15, the final there. Ian, what did you see from Chase Young today? Did, it, did you get flashes of a Nick Bosa from 2019? I didn't get so flashes from uh, from 2019, but I did see a lot of good football from the kid. And I can tell you he's not going to be Nick Bosa because they're two different players, but he's going to be a very good player, Dante, even though he went to the Ohio State. Um, I, don't, I can't really be saying that. I went to Notre Dame. I don't know why. But um, all right, so Chase don't Young. Don't add the V in there for, for Dante here. You're credit. But no, uh, I think Chase Young, obviously he played a decent game today. A few times early in the game where the 49ers were successful, they were running the football at him. You know, they were not blocking him a couple times to force him to go up the field and make, make him think a little bit. And then towards the end of the game, especially in the middle part, they started to, you know, run away from uh, run away from him and run towards Mike McGlinchey. And that's where he started, you know, not be blocked and actually make some plays, pick up the football, taking it to the crib. So uh, the kid has a lot of potential in front of him.